hopefully you all have it. Exodus, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 21. I will read from the ERV. <clears throat> so Moses called the elders together and told them, get the lambs for your families. Kill the lambs for the Passover. Take bunches of hyssop and dip them in the bowls filled with blood. Paint the blood on the sides and top of each door frame. <coughs> no one must leave their house until morning. At the time the Lord goes through Egypt to kill the firstborn, he will see the blood on the sides and top of each door frame. Then he will protect that house and not let the destroyer come into any of your houses and hurt you. You must remember this command. This law is for you and your descendants forever. You must remember to do this even when you go to the land the Lord is giving you. When your children ask you, why are we doing this ceremony? You will say, this Passover is to honor the Lord because when we were in Egypt, he passed over the houses of Israel. He killed the Egyptians, but he saved the people in our houses. The people bowed down and worshiped the Lord. The Lord had given this command to Moses and Aaron, so the Israelites did what the Lord commanded. I would like to speak from the subject, follow instructions. Follow instructions. I think it is important today for us to do just that. <laughs> I know we get this uneasiness or this unsettledness when we want to do what we want to do. I know that we are COVID tired pandemic wore out, virus frustrated. It's been a long time since we've been able to operate and function in a so-called normal matter. But now we see this virus on an uptick and it's quite simply because we will not follow instructions. A lot of times people are saying that God has me. And without a question, without a doubt, God does have us. But God also gives us common sense. When you look at the particular text that I just read, this is where the children of Israel are about to be delivered from Egypt. And they have some instructions in which to follow for the preparation of this particular lamb. And if you read early in the text, it will take you through all of that. I came down to this point because this is where the rubber hits the road. The command, the instructions, are to put the blood over the entire doorpost. Not just the top, not just the side, but the entire post. Because when you do what God has called you to do, the angel of death that's coming through will pass over your house. The angel of death is not concerned whether you are Jew or Gentile, whether you are a believer or non-believer. Anybody that did not have the blood over their doorposts were dying that day. Don't matter how much God had just delivered them through the plagues, don't matter how much they loved the Lord, don't matter how much they felt like, you know, God got me in this thing. No, the reason why they still lived to see the next day was because they followed instructions. 
You might not like the fact that we have been quarantined. You might not like the fact that we have been shut down and shut in. But the only reason the virus is still thriving is because we refuse to follow the instructions. Everybody knows what's best. But the virus doesn't care whether you're a Christian or non-Christian believer or non-believer. The, the virus is going to do what it's designed to do. And then the problem with this is that because the virus hits people differently, people guards are less up and more down because they think that it's no big deal. It's just like a cold. <clears throat> I'll get it and it'll be gone. But this virus has shown us time and time again that you can't figure it out. I myself had the virus and I, I remember when the, the thing first started and, and even my own thought process. There's no way we're going to shut this country down because this country is too money driven. And that's still true today. That's why we've never had a full and complete shutdown to kill this virus because people will not stay put. But now, since we have not done that, we have carried this thing through from the beginning of the year all the way up until almost now the end of the year with no end in sight other than there are some promising uh, vaccines that they're working on, but that still has not come to fruition. But at the beginning, I remember saying that this thing would never happen and it's, you know, the flu has killed more people, you know, and so I'm sitting there like, you know, if the flu has killed so many people and you've never shut the country down, surely this is not going to happen now. I was wrong. <laughs> I never saw this coming. I never thought that I would get the coronavirus simply because I didn't think so. <laughs> Simple as that. And then when I got it and was sick for about five days, I had a temperature of 103. I was sitting there down in my basement and I was thinking, okay, I'm all right. I'm not doing too bad. But man, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Then to find out that other people I knew had it, and they had it longer or worse than what I had. Some people had it for 35 days. Some people had it for four weeks, six weeks, six months. Some people were in coma. Some people were on breathing apparatuses. There were so many different things from the same virus that said, if you get it, you have no idea how it's going to affect you. Then they said people with certain pre preconsisting conditions and things of that nature, and, and so let's protect them, and, 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 and young people won't get it, but now young people have got it, young people have died, people with pre preconceived conditions, or pre-existing conditions have got it and have survived and some have died. There are so many different things. How do we stop it? How do we avoid the issues? Well, we gotta go somewhere and sit down. We really have to follow the instructions and do what the laws dictate that we do at this very moment. That's why I said if the state decides to shut us down, we'll, we'll go back down. You know, we're used to it now. We know how to operate with this. You know, this virus hasn't made us weaker. It's made us stronger. It made us more resilient. But by following the instructions, we are able to eradicate something that has been tearing us apart. We don't have the same hugs and kisses no more. We don't have the same touch and greetings and things of that nature because there is a nervousness, there is an uneasiness. And even though people think, well, you know, I'm real, you know, I, I don't worry about all that kind of stuff, you better. You better worry about it. Because even if you ain't worrying about it, you can carry it to somebody who is. Unbeknownst, 
not sure, not trying to harm anybody, but because you take it so cavalier, and we see it, I, I, I passed the church this morning and they was out there in the parking lot and, and on their way in, and, but there was no mask and everybody was close to one another because they, they, tr they, they trusting in God. <laughs> but God gave us common sense. Like I told you, put the blood on the doorpost. If the blood is not there on the doorpost, that angel of death will take your life. You gotta figure out, are you willing to gamble with that? Are you willing to play with that? I wouldn't be. And I still am a believer. I know what God can do. I know that God has me covered. But at the same time, I must follow the instructions because I want to be successful. I want to do, I want to be what God has called me to be. I want to share the light of Christ, but I want to share it in a way that's responsible and not irresponsible. You got folks who, you know, you've seen it even from the beginning, people having throat, you know, full services and running around, hugging, shouting, kissing, all that other kind of stuff. And then there's a super spread and the whole sickest church, the pastor, the pastor is dead. All these things happen because of people foolishly saying that God has me when God gave you instructions. God has, God ordained government. If, 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 if God has ordained a government and they've given us some information to go somewhere, to sit down, to wear a mask, to maintain social distancing so that we can get through this, I promise you, We'd already be through this. If a virus only has 14 days in which to incubate, if we had to shut down for 30 days, the whole country, put everything on pause, and I mean everything. And we had, the country had the power to do that. The president had the power to do that. Now we're coming to a point where we're getting at the end and all of these uh, uh, laws will be expiring and people will owe on their, their homes and rents and all these different things that have been on pause because the bank institutions have not been on pause. When I say on pause, I mean shut everything down in the country for 30 days, then reset. If you don't owe nobody and ain't nobody else pulling or taking, we can actually sit for a moment in time and reset. But because nobody wants to follow the instruction, because nobody wants to be the lead, nobody wants to say what needs to be said, we continue to be fractured across this country from state to state. We got different rules, different regulations, all these different things, and more states have more uh, 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 virus um, you know, deaths and issues than any other state. Why is that? Because people refuse to tell American citizens what they can and cannot do. Come on. We're trying to save the country. And so instead, because we've been hemming and hawing, we've been in this mess since the beginning of the year. We got to follow the instructions that God has given us. We got to do the right thing and stop engaging in the wrong stuff. We come down to the holiday and people just have to come together you know, in large groups and large numbers, and you don't know where everybody's coming from, where everybody's going. You just take a chance. You look at them and say, I believe they're okay. You know, they can take the test and they come in, at least with the test, they come in and say, well, look, I tested, you know, negative, so I'm good. You know, but then you still got to isolate. You still got to man you got to manage where you are. And even though I've had the virus and I got the antibodies and things of that nature, and I'm supposed to be safe to a certain degree, I still wear my mask. I still try to maintain social distance. You know, I still don't go out and hang around a whole bunch of crowds and stuff like that. Why? Because the possibility is still there because we still don't know everything we need to know about this virus. Even when this so-called vaccine comes, we're still learning. It's still a curve. So I come this morning just to say, relax. Don't get so bent out of shape because they tell you to sit still. But at the same time, remember, that now something has happened that has never happened before, that's where your financial discipline has to come into place because um, it's hard to go through something when you need something. When you have spent frivolously and now that you need a savings, you don't have a savings. And so you gotta find ways to work, you gotta find ways to 
to, to, to earn some money to earn a living because the country is not on pause. Just because they limit you from doing something right now does not mean they won't come back and collect later. And that's what's coming uh, into fruition pretty soon unless the government does something else about the decision, to, uh, you know, what's about to happen to people who, you know, who may be homeless because, you know, people don't really care. All they want to know is the bank want their money and I need my money to pay the bank. You, do you follow what I'm saying? If the country had just stood together, if we had clear and decisive leadership, I believe we would have been okay. I believe we could have stopped the virus to the best of our ability by not allowing it to spread because it needs a host in which to spread. If there is no host for it to attach to, eventually it has to die. Our children are not in school because of the virus, because of our determination not to follow the rules, to follow the instructions, or to be as safe as possible, because you still want to live. I get that. But be safe. Don't stop going out there and you know, going to places where you don't have no mask and you're doing everything to spread it, because you keep saying the Lord got you. Put the blood over the post. Then I got you. So when you plead the blood of Jesus, understand that it comes with following orders. Following the instructions to be safe. Not just blindly saying by faith. I said it's faith over fear. And I still say that. But we have to follow instructions. If we follow them, I believe we're going to be okay. So I pray that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Christmas is coming around soon. This virus is on the rise. What are we going to do moving forward to help at least alleviate it from our families? One day at a time, one instruction at a time. Stop thinking you're less than. and Stop blaming God or putting God in position to fail because you won't follow the instructions. Next week, we will open back up. We will continue to be separated, continue to wear our masks, and do everything to continue to maintain safety unless the government shuts us down. The states say, no, you can't have no more than such and such. Or whatever the case may be, we're going to follow the instructions. We're going to follow the rules of the land to the best of our ability to protect everyone and to maintain a safe environment until we can get this virus uh, under control. So look at the scripture and see in this particular text that the angel of death was coming. The only thing that spared was the blood over the doorpost, completely over the doorpost. Jesus has us, yes. He has covered the mount this entire time. But we have never gotten it twisted. We have never stepped outside. And when I saw something that stepped outside, I addressed it. Because I'm looking out for everyone that's in this membership. And I don't want anybody to get sick on our watch. And so while we are doing services, we are doing it by following the instructions. Oh yeah, we got the blood over the doorposts. But even now, we must continue the same process. Never let your guards down. Even when we come out of this thing, we should have been doing most of this stuff a long time ago anyway. Washing your hands and, 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 and being careful of what you touch and where you go and where you put your hands on your face and all those things especially around this time of cold and flu and things of that nature. Even now, my, my voice is cracking up, you know, just because of my old sinus issues and stuff, but it don't matter. People hear that, they be like, well, hey, wait a minute now. Oh, you go, <clears throat> people are like, hey, wait, you can't, you can't do that. Everybody get kind of nervous, you know. So let's do what we're supposed to do. Continue to seek after God's face. But also remember that God did ordain government. So let's follow the instructions. And even when they don't follow them like they're supposed to or tell them they're supposed to, 
we still have to police ourselves. And so that's what we're trying to do. Even with the day, the reason why the service is empty, just in case, you know, somebody did get it out of, out of line, it was an out party or somewhere, or, or the crowd of folks and they felt like they were safe. I didn't want anybody to come into to the mount, you know, who may have been contagious but didn't know it. So we allow those seven days to go past where if something is there, it should come be active. If not, we should be good. And we continue to say those who are sick and not feeling well stay home, and you guys have done that. When one of our members have contacted somebody who has COVID, they have stayed home in quarantine for the mandatory time before they came back to the mound. Why? Because they followed the instructions. And that's why we continue to be safe. And we will continue to be safe if we keep doing what we got with what you know what we have to do. So you know, whatever your church's instructions are, follow them. If your church is too big and you can't really gather because you can't successfully uh, separate yourselves, go on virtually. You know, most, most churches now have a virtual service. You know, make sure you continue to bless your church and to give so they can continue to operate and things of that nature so that they can help those who can't help themselves at that particular moment. Life doesn't stop because something comes in to throw us a curve. That's why I say, yeah, favor ain't fair, you know. It is what it is, and we have to learn how to accept those things. But knowing that God is in control, knowing that God is in charge, it gives me a peace, a joy, which surpasses all understanding. Yes, we will continue to fight this thing, but stop getting into your feelings because you can't do what you want to do. And for those who are definitely struggling, reach out. Call somebody, talk to somebody. Because you can still maintain contact without being in physical presence. And if you do come in a physical presence, make sure you have your mask on. Make sure you maintain that six feet, or really, go eight feet of distance, you know, because they keep changing that too. <laughs> so just be careful, you know, and watch yourself. That's all we can really do. You know, my son, he still goes to basketball training. You know, we go up in there, they put the, you know, check the temperatures and stuff like that. Everybody comes in, you know, and they, they wear the mask, you know. But there, there's still times that, you know, there's a possibility anything can happen, and we know that. But what we hope for is that while we are following the instructions, God will continue to keep us and bless us, you know. And if we do happen to succumb, then it won't be a violent one. You know, but it'll come and they go. Like I talked to a friend of mine the other day who had it. The temperature never reached beyond 100. You know, and he don't has a fever no more. So he's on the down, he's on the downturn now. So that's a good thing. So like I said, you never know what's going to happen and how it's going to hit you. But just know, yes, God has us. But let us follow the instructions that are out there so that we can continue to not only keep ourselves safe, but keep our friends and our family safe as well too. Amen. Amen. That's all I got this morning for you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I thank you for tuning in this morning, but it really meant a lot. And the Lord laid it on my heart because of all this is going on is that we have to follow these instructions. And if we do, nine times out of ten, we're going to make it through this. And we're going to make it through it together. So continue to do what's right. Continue to plead the blood of Christ. But just know he gave us some common sense to follow. And you can go out throughout the scriptures and, and you, you will see the same thing. Even when you look at the temptations, uh, you know, the Satan tempting Jesus in the wilderness. You know, he said, you know, you should not tempt the Lord thy God. You know, we know what God can do, but we're not going to tempt him to see what he's going to do. You know, don't tell me what I need for God. I know what God's going to do for me. But I don't have to go out there and go, yeah, come and get me. No, we don't have to do that. Just follow the instructions. Let God lead and let him guide. And I promise you, y'all, we're going to be all right. And before you know it, we'll be back to hugging as well, too. Amen. Door to the church open this morning. God bless you. You may have not understood all that is going on right now. And it may have your mind wondering, you know, whether you're coming or going. But when you look at things with the right perspective, 
you realize you can make it through. If you look at it like the henny penny, the sky is falling every time something happens, you're going to drive yourself crazy. You know, some people have never went out because of this virus, and it's driving them crazy. You got to go out. You just got to protect yourself when you go out. Go out for a walk, you know, go on daily walks or, or, or go to a place where you feel that you can breathe and not feel congested by just being in your home 24-7. That'll drive anybody crazy. But knowing that God has you and that you're following the instructions, even when you come out, as long as you maintain your distance and have your mask, I promise you, you'll find a reason to continue to thrive and to live versus just trying to survive. With the knowledge of Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, I'm able to do that, and you are too. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, but you're ready to make that move, you're ready to take that step, repeat this simple prayer after me. Father, forgive me a sinner. Come into my life and make me whole. I've done it my way, and it's time for me to do it your way. Lead me and guide me as only you can. Cover me with the blood of your son. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I believe if you prayed that simple prayer, that you are now born again. Now it is up to you to learn and grow in that faith. And faith comes through time and watching how God works in our lives. And so if you continue on that journey and you find a good church home or find a, 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 good play, a good teaching atmosphere where you can learn God's word and you can read God's word and you can begin to pray and talk to the Father, I promise you life will change for you in a better way versus a worse way. Continue on this journey. For those of us who have already accepted Christ, strengthen your walk, strengthen your relationship with him. Talk with him. Lead. Let him lead you and guide you so that you can help others see the Christ in you. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now. We thank you for your time, the space that you have given us to be able to talk about your word in a way that reflects what's going on in our very world this day, Father. We know that the virus is here, Lord. We know you already know about it. You know about it before it came. And through this virus, we haven't become weaker. We've become stronger. We've become more resilient. For those of us who continue to try to follow the instructions, you have enlightened us. And you have kept us on the path. And you have taught us ways to do things that we never thought we could do before. To continue to promote ministry and the growth of people. Even contact outside of physical contact we've learned how to do it through the video zooms and, and facetimes and, and skype and all those things where we can still reach out from state to state and country to country to have a bigger presence than we've had before and so we thank you for those things because like i said there's no good thing no such thing as a crisis that does not produce something good if it doesn't produce something good it's not a good crisis and father this is a good crisis we have learned, we have grown, but now we pray continuously for this country and for the leadership to be clear and decisive on how we can eradicate this thing that has taken us out of our norm. We pray, Lord, that you would have your way with your churches, with your people, that they would not keep blaming you or putting you at the forehead as the reason why something bad is happening, Father but they would fall on ourselves to be able to follow the instructions that set forth that even though you have us covered, we must use our common sense in which we operate. So bless us, Lord. Touch us. And let us be the kind of servants that encourage and build and follow the instructions to help others save their lives. Let us be who we need to be so that we can be a beacon of light versus being lost in darkness. Help us, Father. 
to continue forward. Christmas is quickly approaching. We want this thing to be under some kind of control, Father. So let us go somewhere and sit down and pay attention to what we're doing until we can get rid of this thing. But in the meantime, let us make the phone calls. Let us do the Zooms and the phone FaceTime and things of that nature to continue to reach out to those who are reachable. And to those who aren't reachable, let us find a way in which to reach them as well and let them know that they are still thought about, that they are still cared about. Because ultimately, we are to look out and to love one another. So help us as a church, help us as a people, help us as a country to come together to beat this thing which has been beating up on us. Bless now, Lord, and keep as only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody who's listening say amen. Romans 12, for the people of God. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me that every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having the gifts different according to the grace that is given to us with a prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, nor he that teacheth on teaching, nor he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue in instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving the hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt he coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Once again, we thank you for tuning in this morning. We pray that you heard something that might change your mind in a better way. In a better way to help your family stay safe, to help you stay safe. Continue to do the things that we must do so that we can continue to thrive and not just survive. God loves us. He blesses us. And he keeps us. And unfortunately, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So just know, half the battle is following instructions. If you do that, God can bless you. If you don't, don't blame that on God. Blame it on yourself wanting to do what you want to do, even at the point of bringing others down. That's not the type of God that I serve. Let's do what we're supposed to do to keep one another safe. Amen. Church motto, my purpose is bigger than my circumstances. Tell somebody sitting next to you, your purpose is bigger than your circumstances. Reach your hands toward the heavens and say, our purpose is bigger than our circumstances. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.